Welcome back to Hoops Lounge, where the show with more children than Sean Kemp. My name is Mark Griffin, a.k.a. Montreal Mark. I'm joined by my partner in crimes, Phil Boileau Sporting. Phil, today we are talking the OKC Thunder once again, and their mid-season changes, let's say, and uh, if or, whether or not they're actually a title contender uh, after all this mix-up. So, Phil, um, a lot of changes going into the trade deadline. Reggie Jackson out. Kendrick Perkins out. They now have in the mix Ennis Cantor, DJ Augustine, Kyle Singler, Steve Novak. What do you think of the changes? Well, it's kind of interesting, right? Because a lot of people have been saying for years that Kendrick Perkins didn't make sense on the court. Some people have been saying off the court that his leadership are going to be missed, um, is going to be missed. But uh, let's not forget, just before that, they did it. They did also pick up Dion Waiters. And right. so in a weird way, it's kind of like they traded Reggie Jackson, who was essentially a backup to Russell Westbrook, for the, the former number four pick overall, Deion Waiters, who is a scoring six-man off the bench, and number three overall, uh, big man, Ennis Cantor. And if you looked at this team before this trade and before the season started, we'll say, this team was lacking low post scoring, which they now have in Cantor, and they were lacking bench scoring, which they now have in Waiters. It allows them to start Andre Robertson at the two-guard, to play lockdown D between Durant, who's uh, injured right now, and Russell Westbrook. And let's not forget uh, Kyle Singler, who they got from the Detroit Pistons, a 6'9", small forward, can shoot the ball. So now suddenly they have an incredibly deep team, incredibly young, can shoot, score inside, outside. And if you, if you look at his PR and his usage, DJ Augustine is not actually a step down from, from Reggie Jackson, but they added all these other pieces. I think this propels them from you know, maybe a team that would maybe make the playoffs to a team that I wouldn't want to face no matter who I was. Yeah, and I, I have to put this out there because at the beginning, well, actually, first month of the season, you said they were not going to make the playoffs, and I said they'd get the eighth spot. Obviously, things changed. This roster is dramatically different. Uh, one other name i got to throw out there is that Mitch McGarry has been a surprise for them the last month, uh, basically starting his rookie season mid-year. Exactly, coming off a bit of a, an injury bug coming off the draft, uh, but it allows their their big man rotation. At, as this, at the center rotation, they still have Steven Adams. They didn't have to give up him. They still have Mitch McGarry, um, Ennis Cantor. So all those guys, super young. I believe they're all about 22 years old. Power forward, uh, it allows uh, Perry Jones to play the three and the four. They still have Serge Ibaka. And I've actually found that in Durant's absence, Ibaka's really been stepping up. Uh, he's getting more shots, and weirdly enough, the, the the one complaint we've been having about Russell Westbrook for years is that he doesn't pass the rock. Well, look at what he's been doing in Durant's absence. I it's something like he doesn't feel the pressure to need to shoot to you know uh, go mono mono with the MVP, and now his assist numbers are jumping up there. He's actually top five in the league in scoring and assists and steals. Yeah, I mean, we'll get to that conversation in a minute, but, uh, I mean, one thing that's very worrisome from OKC right now is Kevin Durant's foot. Uh, he had to have, quote-unquote, a procedure. Basically, he had to readjust a bolt in his foot. Um, these type of injuries can be long-going. Uh, I think I brought it up uh, early in the season. You know, Brooke Lopez had a very similar injury uh, as Kevin Durant had, and he was out for basically a year and a half, two years. Uh, this can be a bit worrisome for Kevin Durant and the, do the doctors. I mean... Do you think this is going to be a long-term thing for him, considering how frail of a body he has, or do you think this is just kind of something he's going to get through? Well, from the reports I've been reading on this injury, it had more to do with an aggravation of the bolt that was placed in to fix his previous injury and it rubbing the wrong way. Like, uh, no two feet are created the same, so every time you try to fix an injury like that, there is always the risk. So they changed that up in this foot to try to alleviate the swelling. So I think at this point it's really now to alleviate that pain and alleviate the swelling. It was a little bit more that than, you know, a quote-unquote injury per se. Now, is he highly, you know, at risk of other injuries considering his body type? Of course. And I think he's been trying to put on weight over the years, but his body type is kind of what it is. Um, but at the same point, I think they need him to win uh, at a high level, but I think they can scrape by without him in the short term and still continue to make the playoffs, especially considering uh, Phoenix with their trade woes uh, haven't seemed to come out of the gate off that very well. 
and uh, the Pelicans have lost Anthony Davis for an amount of time for a shoulder injury. So the competition for the eighth spot has kind of dropped, allowing them to be, you know, kind of generous with the time they give off to uh, the former MVP. And, uh, okay, so getting back to what you were saying about uh, MVPs, um, I said it last year kind of infamously on NBA TV Canada's The Hangout that OKC is Westbrook's team. I've taken heed. I continue to take heed for that. And interestingly enough, last week, none other than Bill Simmons stepped up and said the same exact thing. Is it Westbrook's team now, or is it still Durant the man? Well, I found it very interesting. Even before Durant was went out, I found when they started to make their ascent and win some games, we were seeing Durant keep his scoring role, but I felt he was taking a back seat in terms of leadership and on-court presence to Russell Westbrook. Now, when you look at their personalities, Russell Westbrook has that Kobe Bryant mamba mode. He attacks. He's fearless. He wants to win. He's diving for every loose ball. He's the guy you want leading your squad. Now, it's always been the argument of these are both hyper superstars in the league. A lot of people have argued them both top five players, so they both should be leading. But I think they have found the secret sauce here in letting Russell Westbrook run the team. And when he knows it's his team, he's giving up the ball a little bit more. His assist numbers are rising. I think that confidence that the ball will come back to him and that he's being seen as at, as a real important part in that team it is allowing him to you know, avoid the syndrome of, I must shoot every time I can. And I think a really interesting kind of, I don't know if you want to call it, symptom or effect of that is, over the last few months, Kevin Durant has been a lot more verbal, a lot more vocal, a lot more, let's say, uh, more than PG-13. You know, he's speaking his mind more. He, he's kind of adopting more of a Westbrook personality. And, you know, the team is kind of building its identity around Westbrook, I would say, honestly. And, uh, you know, that's why Westbrook's in the MVP conversation right now. He's one of those top five guys. Um, let's get back to the playoff hunt. Now, they could end up with an eighth seed, maybe even a sixth seed. Who knows? Do you think these guys could actually pull together and win the title? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, it's interesting, actually. Before this trade, I wouldn't have necessarily said so. I think low post scoring is something that's incredibly important in a, lo a long postseason run. And even teams that don't have 20-point scores have the ability often to put the ball in the basket. Now with Ennis Cantor, I feel they have that. And Dion Waiters... A bit of a ball hog, but as that six man off the bench, I really like that. I love their depth. I love their ability to shoot from every position. You know, Ennis Cantor, let's not forget, this year was adding the three-point ball to his uh, to his resume. Serge Ibaka can shoot, Singler can shoot, Durant can shoot, Morrow can shoot. He just goes on and on and on. I mean, maybe they don't have elite shooting from their point guard position. Augustine's not bad. But the team can shoot. The team uh, is, I think, second or third in the league in rebounds per game. And... I think they have everything it takes. I wouldn't want to play them. And considering that depth, as we're seeing here, you can even afford one huge loss and still keep rolling. I'm going to say no on my end because of the uh, X factor of Kendrick Perkins, the fact that Cleveland just swooped him up. I think LeBron knows how important he is in the locker room behind the scenes. He is a veteran presence that they do not really have in Oklahoma City. Uh, I think the ongoing issue, the alpha male, beta male between Durant and Westbrook will just kind of pop its evil head again uh, when, well, when and if Kevin Durant's healthy, completely healthy. And um, they have a lot of players to throw in the mix, so chemistry is going to be an issue uh, that they're going to have to figure out the second half of the season where a lot of teams already have that already figured out. I'm going to think I'm just going to say they go to the second or third round, but I, I, I slowly think that window is closing and, uh, you know, the looming 2016 uh, trade deadline for Kevin Durant, uh, he's going to be probably elsewhere. But who knows? We'll see. And we have this videotape here as evidence. Phil, I want to thank you for being back, and uh, uh, I'll throw it back to you to wrap up. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining for no joining us on another episode in the lounge talking about the OKC Thunder and their title contention. Uh, join us all the time on hoopslounge.com. We're always trying to bring you new content, be it videos, articles, podcasts, and anything in between. And go to the contributor section to contact us if you want to continue the conversation on social media. So on behalf of Mark, myself, and the rest of the Hoops Lounge team, I want to thank you for keeping in the lounge.